So first off, we're going to look at the microscope. Now to summarize, the problem is that you want to look at something that is very small. That means the image on your retina is very small and you might not be able to resolve the details as we discovered by looking at the example of the retina display question. Now the solution is to use lenses to make the object appear larger. But how? Well, the bleeding obvious method is to put a lens between your eye and the object you're looking at. So here's the object you want to look at, here's the lens, and your eye is somewhere over here. And as long as the object is between the focal length of the lens and the lens itself, it'll make something look bigger. And this is a magnifying glass. So here's your eye without any help. We have the object that we're trying to look at with some height h. This gives you some angle theta 1, which is the maximum angle of light entering your eye. And we have a theta 1 over on this side as well, because they're similar triangles. And we end up with a image here with height h1 on your retina. And we have the object and image lengths here. This is the distance in your eye, and this is the closest your lens in your eye can focus. So we have the ratio of h1 to h must be negative i on o. This just comes from similar triangles. So we can rearrange this to find h1 being equal to negative 2 divided by 15 times h. Or alternatively, we can write that h1 is equal to negative i tan theta 1, where tan theta 1 is h divided by o, or h divided by 15 centimeters. So this is an expression for tan theta 1, which is h on o, or h on 15 centimeters. We're going to use this definition of tan theta 1 on the next page. So, the next thing to do is see what happens when you put a lens in front of your eye, i.e. a magnifying glass. So what happens is that now we're going to have some virtual image off in the distance here. So it could be magnified to be very, very large. And this will have rays going at some angle theta 2 off in this direction, so there's an angle theta 2 here. If we put our, our object here at the focal length of the lens, so at f, so that the image now appears off in infinity, then we can say that tan theta 2 is equal to h on f. So h is the height of the object, f is the distance to this lens, so theta 2 must be, tan theta 2 must be h on f. And the, the, uh, the light coming into your eyes then will have parallel rays, so it will be collimator coming into your eyes by similar triangles. We have an a angle here of theta 2 and some inverted image over here. So h2, that's this height of this object, of this image over here, is going to be negative i tan theta 2. We have h1, remember h1, that was without the lens, and h1 is equal to negative i tan theta 1. So the ratio of h2 to h1 is the ratio of the tangents of these angles. Now the smaller f, the bigger theta 2 will be. So this tells you straight away, lenses with a smaller focal length will make theta 2 larger, because as f gets smaller, theta 2 will get larger. So tan theta 1, remember, was h on 15 centimeters. Tan theta 2 is h on f. So the ratio of h2 to h1 is negative tan theta 2 on tan theta 1, substituting in all the expressions for this, and we get that h2 on h1 is negative 15 centimeters on f. And 15 centimeters comes from the closest you can position something to your eye and still focus on it. Now for small angles, this is equal to theta 2 on theta 1. And we define the magnification of your magnifying glass as negative 15 centimeters on f. And the reason for that is this, this number here, this ratio, negative 15 centimeters on f, is the ratio of h2 to h1. h1 was how big it was, your, the image was on your retina. Before we use the magnifying glass, when you add the magnifying glass, we get h2. And so the magnification is the ratio of these, um, these image sizes here. So as long as this is bigger than 1, you've succeeded in making a bigger image on your retina. There's one more thing I want to point out here, and this is the idea of angular size. So we're dealing with an object here with a height h in some units of length. And then we get an image over here which has units of length. But actually, you can see that this angle here, theta 2 in this case, the, the angular size of this object on your eye, is 
some sort of proxy for this height. So, because your eye has a fixed length, the bigger you make this angle theta 2, the bigger the object will appear on your retina. And so, it's always the case then, if you're looking at something which is really small over here, its angular size is very small. So whether you're looking at a tiny little bug with a small angular size, and because it has a small height here, or whether you're looking at something really, really far away, it might be a star, which is enormous, but it has a very small angular size. The goal in the end is always to try and get the biggest angle possible on your retina that makes it look as big as possible to your visual system. Okay, so if we return now to thinking more specifically about the microscope rather than just angular sizes in general, you can ask the question, what's the limit to this magnification? Well, the limit will be how small can you make f? How do you make f small? Well, you need to make these glass surfaces here very, very curved. So how well can this work? Well, and what is the limit to a single lens microscope? It's how curved you can make glass. And if you make a, a tiny little ball of glass, that will be about the best you can do for a single lens microscope. And if you make tiny little balls of glass, the optical quality is not going to be great. So we need a better strategy for making better microscopes.